Hey everybody, Steve here. Today we're going to deal with a topic that is near and dear to, I would assume, many hearts. Faster internet. There's nothing more frustrating when you're trying to work on something and your internet grinds to a halt. So, there is one main solution. Go to your ISP or your internet service provider and pay for more speed. But that's not always the right solution. Quite often, the simplest solution is tweaking your computer, changing a few settings here and there to make your speed the maximum possible speed that it could be and to get the full benefit for what you're paying for. So come along with me today as we'll look at how to improve your internet speed for free. Faster internet for free. Sounds too good to be true, but honestly, you can definitely make your internet a lot faster by checking some settings on your computer. But before we can check anything in terms of ch making changes to it, we need to determine what our current speed is. You can simply open up a web browser. Once that's open, go to your standard speedtest.net. Type that into your address bar. Now, here's something you need to know about this speed test. Determine who your provider is. In my case, it's Shaw Communications, and their main server is in Kelowna, BC. Make sure you're using the same server to do this comparison. Otherwise, you are honestly wasting your time because you can get vastly different results depending on where your initial server is. If you're going to test a Shaw or a Telus or Rogers connection or any other one and use another server, you are not going to get a true measure of your speed. So click on go. It takes a few seconds and you'll see what your current download and upload rate is. Now for a true comparison, you really do want to do a couple of different tests. And just to get a true average, I'm going to take it for a third time and then we're going to average the three connections. Okay, perfect. Now we have an average for that. Here's your first major tip. Are you on a wired connection or a wireless connection? It does make a massive difference depending on which one you're on. Click on Start. Go into your control panel. If you don't see this view, instead you see that view, click on Calgary on the right-hand side and change it to small icons. You have a lot more options available. The one we're looking for is this Network and Sharing Center. Click on it, and you can see from here, I am connected via Wi-Fi. Click on Change Adapter Settings. And you can see on this one, just for this test, I have a Wi-Fi connection, and I have a regular wired connection. And the whole purpose for this is to show you the difference between a wired connection on a decent wireless network and a wired connection. And you will see the difference. So I'm going to enable my wired connection. and I will disable my Wi-Fi connection. Okay, now we're going to run the exact same test. No difference. Use the same web browser, the same computer, the same settings, the same everything, just to get a true comparison. I'm going to choose the short communications in Kelowna. Click on Go. And as I did for the wired wireless connection, I'm going to click do this three times by clicking on go again, just so that we get a true comparison or a true average. And one more time to get the third one in. Now keep in mind, the only thing that I did different between these two tests was I changed from a wireless connection to a wired connection. It does make that much of a difference. So if you're next to your router, for goodness sakes, don't use wireless, plug it in with a cable. Fortunately, in Windows 10, they also have 
an app that you can download. Click on Start and start typing Store to bring up the Microsoft Store. Once you're in the store, wait for it to load here. Up in the search bar, just type Speed Test. Now the standard speed test is Ookla. Click on that, download the application. Okay, I've already got it installed. Click on Launch. And again, just make sure that your server is for your provider to get an accurate measurement of your speed and also use the same one each time. And it's the, sim the same thing. You just click on Go and let it run its own test and it will show you what your current download and upload speed is. I do honestly run this at least once a week just to see if something is going on with my network or if my shore connection has gone down, perhaps a cable's been knocked loose or something may have gone wrong. I'm paying for a 600 megabit package and I'm getting just above that, which is perfectly fine by me. You can get faster connections, you can get slower. It all depends, of course, on what you want to pay for your internet. And there we go. Now we have a good comparison. So keep this app in mind. It really is a handy app to use. The next crucial aspect to testing your speed is to see what speed your network card is actually connected with. If you're on Wi-Fi, this part is not as relevant, but if you're on a wired connection, which hopefully you are, this will make a huge difference as well. Click on Start, go into your control panel. Once there, click on Network and Sharing Center. Click on your Ethernet connection in the right-hand side here. It could be named something else, but it will be on the right-hand side here. Here is the information that we need to look at. Your speed right here. If it says one gigabit per second, that means your router, your switch, and everything there is rated at gigabit speed. If you see this at 100 megabits per second or 10, you got a huge bottleneck on your network. I have been into so many businesses where they complain about their internet speed. I check this connection and sure enough, it's at 100 or 10. I start following the cables and they've got a very old switch somewhere that's at a slow, slow speed or an old router that only supports up to 100 megabit per second. Switches, routers, they're all cheap these days. Upgrade them and make sure whatever you get, it's rated at gigabit, not 10 slash 100. This makes a big, big difference on your speed. This next tip is argumentatively one of the biggest things that you can do to change your internet speed and that is in modifying the DNS settings. DNS, what is DNS? DNS is a domain name system, or basically a huge phone book of all the addresses on the internet. It translates common names like google.com or youtube.com into an actual address of where the server resides. And most people know those as 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 or other numbers. Internally, there's an address called 192.168.0.1, which is your most routers. 1.1 is another router. But here's the setting that a lot of people are saying makes a difference. And I have tested this and they are correct. It does make a huge difference. To check what your DNS setting is, just bring up a command prompt and in there type IP config. When you read the information on this screen, you'll see your IP address and internal number, your default gateway. In my case, that's 192.168.1.1. And if you do an IP config forward slash all, it lists more information, such as your DNS service. What I look for when I do this is the common servers on the internet. 64.59.168.13 is sure in Canada, and that's the one that I use, and it works really well. The one that everybody is saying makes the difference is adding this one, 1.1.1.1, which is the new Cloudflare DNS system. It basically helps you to look up websites faster. So Cloud, Cloudflare has theirs, which is 1.1.1.1. They also have another address, 1.1.1.2, which blocks malware. And then they have a third one, 1.1.1.3, which blocks malware and also blocks adult content. So you can add those to your router to change your DNS for your entire home. 
The other one a lot of people use is OpenDNS, which is 208.67.222.222 or 208.67.222. But how do you know which of these is really faster? But first, let's have a look. I'll go into my router, which in this case is at 192.168.1.1. And you have to sign in. So make sure you do know your login username and password. I'm not going to save the password. I never do save passwords. That's one key tip. When you're on a website and they ask you to save your password, please never, never, never save your password. So what we're going to do on this page is in this particular router, we have to click on basic. Once we're in basic, we go into DNS and here is where you make the changes. Every router is different, but there is a spot where you can change the DNS that it gives out to your local computers. In this case, I chose my Shaw one as the first one and I chose the Cloudflare as a second one because at the time of testing, my Shaw was way faster than the Cloudflare. So how do we know which one is faster? Again, fortunately, somebody has released a wonderful tool called DNS Bench. DNS Pen Bench is a freeware program by Steve Gibson. You can easily get the website by looking for it on the internet. I'll also post a link to it in the bottom of this page. You simply click on the I or click on the image on the screen and that'll download the DNS Bench. There is an option where you can create your own DNS bench.ini tool, which I have done, and I've added the standard ones in. So as you can see at the top, I have the three 1.1.1 addresses from Cloudflare, the two from Google, a bunch from Shore Cable, and the two from OpenDNS. And every once in a while, I'd say probably once a month or once every other month, I would come in here, I'd run DNS bench, which loads up all the servers, resolves the names correctly so I can see. The ones that have the solid green here are the ones that is currently detecting as my current DNS servers. You can simply run a benchmark. It takes a couple of minutes for this to run. Depending on how many DNS servers you have in the list, it could take a while. But because I've limited the list to just ones that I want to test, I can see where they rate right now in terms of speed. And if I want my internet to be faster. Now, when you're downloading a program, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Where this makes a difference is if you're browsing from website to website, clicking on links here, clicking on links there, typing google.ca or do google.com, going to that website, then you're going to another website, you're downloading email at the same time, you're doing all kinds of things. It has to take that English name, translate it into an IP address, and that's where your DNS servers are so vital. It makes that lookup time so much better if you've got a fast DNS response time. Low latency is a good thing to have, not bad. So as you can see in this case, 1.1, because it's starting to get busier and busier with more people using it, it has dropped down the list. So my two from Shaw are right at the top of the list. So I'll most likely go in and change my DNS again to match these two, simply because I want things to be as fast as possible. All right, let's close this down. The next thing I'm gonna look at is jumping out of DNS and network settings at the moment to Windows 10. Windows 10 can significantly slow down your internet. There's two settings that are vital here to check. First thing that you want to check is Windows Update Delivery Optimization. Click on Start, go into your settings, click on Update and Security, click on Advanced Security, oh, sorry, Advanced Options right there, Scroll down the page if you need to. Click on Delivery Optimization. Mine is all turned off on this screen by software that I use to maintain my network. But these options right here allow, allow downloads from other PCs. PCs on my local network, PCs on my local network, and PCs on the internet. Basically, what you're doing with this is if your computer, say, downloads Windows 10 Update 2004, you are allowing other computers on your network to come to your computer to grab that update. That'll really slow your computer down. At home, you really don't need these settings turned on. In a business, there are some PCs that do act as a master PC for everybody to connect to because that could make their internet faster because it downloads all those updates quickly onto one computer, then the other computers access that one. 
Typically, it wouldn't be one that you're looking at, looking at using because it slows you down. Most businesses that I deal with, I set these settings up for the server so that the server does all the downloading and then the computers connect to the server and downloads everything from there. And that really is a good thing to have. The next option you want to look in here is click on Home, go into your privacy, and I have dealt with this uh, in my previous video, video, please click on the link at the top here. That'll take you to, is Microsoft spying on you? Because this is very relevant in this case. And it is your background apps. Scroll down to the section that says background apps. All of these things running in the background, turn them off. Unless, of course, you're using it. I mentioned before, I use the alarm and clock one. The rest of these turn off because the more these run in the background, the more bandwidth it's taking up, the more it's going to slow your internet down. So if you're not using these, turn them off. I do use Snip and Sketch in the background because I like to do screen captures all the time. So I leave that running. I do look at the weather. So I leave that one on. But all these other ones, turn them off. There's no reason to have that on and slow down your computer. Unless, of course, you want a slow computer. Another thing to do when it comes to your Wi-Fi is to get a Wi-Fi analyzer. Again, just bring up the store in Windows 10. Once your store loads, click on search and just search for Wi-Fi analyzer. Okay, as you can see, I already have this one installed. The purpose for this tool is to see which channel is best for you to use in your Wi-Fi. Problem is most areas, the channels are flooded, especially channel six. A lot of people tend to set everything up by default, which is channel six. And that really does cause some problems with the Wi-Fi being slower. So what you wanna do is grab this tool on your notebook or something, click on analyze, and it will show you the channels. When it comes to the 2.4 gigahertz range, you have three channels that don't overlap, one, six, and 11. Those are the ideal channels to use. In my area here, you can see that channels six and 11 are actually the best ones to use. Bear in mind, the lower the DBM, the better your signal is. Too much interference, that signal really does get bad, such as over here where you're getting down to minus 70, minus 80, which becomes almost unusable. That's when your signal strength goes from one from four bars down to one bar. A couple of good options in here is your analyze and your network. So you can see in the area, like if I look at our area here, what is the best one to use? And anything that is swinging over to the right hand side are the best channels to be used. In my case, I have probably six or seven different Wi-Fi channels because of my business, and I can swap back and forth between those channels. So do grab an analyzer, whether you use this one or another one, it doesn't really matter, as long as you use one so that you can determine what channel is best in your area. Especially if you're in a built-up area like downtown, or you have a lot of offices around you, or you're in an apartment complex, there you have a lot of overlap. And the more overlap, the worse your Wi-Fi. All right, we're in the home stretch as far as optimizing our Wi-Fi network. The next one we're going to deal with is right click on this PC, select manage, click on your device manager, and under your network adapters, right click on each adapter in turn and select properties. Under the advanced tab, you're looking for this specific option right here, large send offload V2 IPv4. Disable this option, it does make a difference. What this is, is it's large segmentation offload, which allows the ethernet adapter to take larger packets of data, break them down, taking the load off of the CPU, but it does slow things down quite a bit. On a lot of networks, I have seen this one setting alone make quite a vast difference on the speed of their network. So disable that and see what the changes that it makes on your speed. The next one, a lot of people on the internet have posted this option. I'm not gonna show you where it is. It's called QoS Packet Scheduler. People are turning it off because they say that Microsoft takes away 20% of their network bandwidth in reserves for the operating system. This is not correct. If you see that option that somebody tells you to do it, 
do not change your QoS packet scheduler. Leave it at the defaults that Microsoft has set it to. The information out there is wrong. Please do not change it. The last option that I see a lot of when I go into customers' places and they say their internet is really, really slow. First thing I'll do is I'll drag my mouse down to the bottom, expand all their icons so I can see what's running on their computer, and you'll be surprised how many times I go into a computer and they have a, fire, a VPN turned on. Whether it's in a vast VPN or any other ones that are on the market, a VPN, although it secures your connection, will slow things down. And if you're VPNing into another country that's not nearer to you, your internet connection will be incredibly slower, easily 10 to 30 times slower I've seen in many cases. So if you don't need to secure your browsing, hist your browsing activity, don't use the VPN. For most cases, it really isn't necessary. The only thing you're doing to yourself is making life tougher because your internet will be really, really slow. Just do a test. Turn on your VPN, run speed test, and see how much bandwidth or how slow it is for you.